Underinformed and Misunderstood, Reframing the Poverty Debate. According to the government, 15% of the American population lives in poverty. But what does that mean? As far as the government and most Americans are concerned, poverty means making below a certain amount of money each year. But is this definition enough to encompass the totality of what poverty is? We believe that it is time for America to reconsider poverty, to move away from basing our measurements solely on income and instead look at individuals and families' ability to achieve their basic needs. For those of you familiar with the terms, we can give you some insight by telling you that our ideal method of measuring poverty is an FCSU-based capabilities analysis. But for those of you who thought that sounded like a foreign language, don't worry. We will explain exactly what that means. The first important terms we need to establish are functionings and capabilities, which form the core of how we believe that poverty should be approached. Functionings, as defined by Amartya Sen, are the various things that a person manages to do or be in their life, whereas capabilities are the alternative combinations of functionings a person can achieve and from which he or she can choose one collection. The capabilities approach to poverty allows for a more direct view of what the OPM and SPM are really trying to measure than through income, which is what that income allows a person to do or be. Martha Nussbaum goes so far as to list 10 such capabilities she believes are necessary for a person to pursue a dignified and minimally flourishing life. These are life, bodily health, bodily integrity, senses, imagination, and thought, emotions, practical reason, affiliation, other species, play, and control over one's environment. We feel that Nussbaum's list is too broad and that her list of capabilities encompasses issues that while important, go beyond the scope of what truly constitutes poverty. However, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We find the capabilities approach to be the best way to measure poverty, but think that poverty analysis needs to stick to capabilities that directly concern basic FCSU needs. Currently, the United States government does not take into account capabilities when it looks at poverty, instead relying on a measurement that considers only gross pre-tax income. As a choice of measurement used by the government has serious implication for different policies seeking to alleviate poverty, it is important to examine the shortcomings of these metrics. The official poverty measure, or the OPM, defines a threshold for gross pre-tax income that is three times the lowest cost food plan as defined by the government. The OPM is adjusted for inflation and family size, but other than that, it remains constant over time and does not change as standards of living rise or fall. While the OPM threshold may have at one time been sufficient to gauge poverty, it is woefully inadequate in the present day and age to give a clear depiction of poverty. Even beyond the fact that its basic assumptions not are true, as nowadays families spend on average one-sixth of their income on food, not one-third, the OPM is completely incapable of taking into account the varying costs and opportunities that affect the impoverished. The OPM does not take into account non-cash benefits or in-kind benefits, such as Medicaid, food stamps, and housing subsidies, even though these benefits can and do push some families over the poverty line in terms of the purchasing power. Nor does it include tax credits and costs and other non-discretionary expenses such as child care costs. One of its greatest failings is that it does not take into account variable geographic costs. A person who makes $12,000 a year in Birmingham and pays $1,000 a year for rent and FCSU needs could qualify for benefits, while an individual who makes $15,000 a year in New York City but pays $4,000 for rent and FCSU needs would not be considered to be impoverished, even though his actual buying power is worse off than the man in Birmingham. The Supplemental Poverty Measure, a proposed alternative to the Official Poverty Measure, does, to its credit, deal with many of the problems inherent in the OPM. It takes into account variable geographic costs, taxes, and benefits that can be used to purchase FCSU needs. While this is a step in the right direction, the SPM still falls short of taking into account all of the relevant factors that are covered by a capabilities-based approach. The SPM is a relative measure, meaning that the poverty line is set relative to the wealth of society. The SPM is based on a person or family's food, clothing, shelter, and utilities needs, otherwise known as FCSU needs, rather than food times three. It also accounts for the impacts of varying housing costs, tax credits or expenses, out-of-pocket medical expenses, and in-kind benefits. While this is a step in the right direction, the supplementary poverty measure still falls short of taking into account all the relevant factors that are covered by a capabilities-based approach. For example, the OPM does not at all take into consideration out-of-pocket medical expenses in calculating poverty, whereas the SPM has begun to factor them into its metrics. 
only the capabilities-based approach, however, looks at other factors related to healthcare beyond its expenses, such as the lack of quality facilities or information that can negatively affect an individual's access to healthcare but are not measurable in purely economic terms. While some might argue that capabilities approach broadens the definition of poverty too much by focusing on the quality of life rather than a strictly monetary measure, such arguments do not take into account the motivational underpinnings of poverty analysis already present in the OPM and SPM. In other words, neither the OPM nor the SPM measure poverty in terms of money merely for the sake of measuring poverty in terms of money. The OPM and the SPM both are based off the assumption that an individual's monetary state holds a direct correlation with their quality of life, and that by measuring the former one can gain an approximate appreciation of the latter. But, of course, capabilities is a rather vague term. Should we consider someone impoverished because they lack the capability to, say, do complex calculus or drive a Ferrari? We believe that poverty should be measured in terms of the individual's capabilities to meet their basic needs to live a minimally decent life. While everyone might have a different conception of what one needs to live a minimally decent life, we're going to be relatively conservative and concern ourselves with the capabilities that allow individuals and families to obtain their FCSU needs, or food, clothing, and shelter utility needs. FCSU needs are the basic capabilities that every person should have, and we believe that any person without those capabilities needs the most immediate assistance, since the lack of those capabilities has the most profound impact on a person's ability to function in society. Although we agree that there are many other important capabilities that can have a huge impact on one's health and happiness, such as the 10 central capabilities outlined by Nussbaum, they should come after FCSU needs as a secondary poverty goal once we can eliminate the truly urgent struggling in our country. Using income as a measure of poverty might seem to be only a step removed from measuring capabilities. However, it is a flawed measure. As a person can have an adequate income, it's still for some reason not be able to feed themselves. For these reasons, we want to define poverty in the U.S. today as whether or not a person has the capability to satisfy their FCSU needs.